Good morning everyone. I have another exciting game to show you of Leela Chess. This is from a very, very exciting Gambit start position. So this was in the Gauntlet set of games John, done by John D. So uh, let's see, uh, Stockfish 6 playing white plays e4. And we go into, this uh, is the center game to start off with. But we head, black taking here, into the Danish Gambit accepted. Now leader's first move here is to play knight c6. It's already a very precarious position. Uh, you don't really want to make too many mistakes here. White plays a3 which is slightly unusual. Usual according to the chess base live book is knight f3 and then there's d6. But we have a3 which has some benefits to stop checks. d6 so this is an interesting decision and of knight f3 the idea is revealed bishop e6 and this is tactically uh, justifiable here as we'll see it takes out the bishop pair immediately after f takes of the queen b3 you might think this is a slight snag but Leela just plays can you guess if I give you five seconds okay queen d7 yeah, this pawn can't be taken here. If it is, then there's rook b8 and then taking the bishop. So this is already taken out the bishop pair to start off with. But there's still a lot of trouble to be uh, ahead, to be parried. Black here, Leela plays actually castling queenside. White castles kingside, knight f6, rook ab1. And now there's a big threat of bishop takes f6. So this is parried with b6. So just to put that on the board, if bishop e7, bishop takes f6, and then that would be mating on b7. So b6, another necessary uh, preventative move. Rook f, c1, king b7, a4, and it's still looking a bit dangerous with the king on the b-file. d5, reacting in the center now. And we have the move knight d4. Knight takes d4, bishop takes, which puts a lot of pressure, it seems, on b6. Now, knight takes e4 is played. So, looking at that knight, knight takes, d takes, looking at, to take the bishop here. That's protected with rook c4. Now, here I find there's another clever little trick, uh, positional. It ha I think it has a positional undertone to it as well. Black to play in this position. What would you play here? Okay, with a lot of firepower being exerted down the B farm with A5 on the way. This looks to be a fairly scary position. But here, E3 was played. So very interesting. If A5 is an example, this wasn't played, then E2... And if we get this position with a takes, a takes, white can't really blast through with bishop takes because there's queen d1 check here, saving the day for black. Uh, so this e3 has got some venom to it in this position. Uh, we basically, uh, so after e3, f takes e is played, e3. And now another intriguing move e5 these stabilizes white takes the bishop away from b6 at the cost of another pawn so Leela is counter sacking some material here the extra material she has to try and stabilize king safety and other factors bishop takes looking at c7 that's parried now so what has black achieved so far well black is still a pawn up bishop takes d6 is played on bishop d4, uh, this seems okay. For example, queen f7 here, uh, with the idea of going into f8 to drive white back, because queen f2 now we threaten with back row mate uh, possibilities, for example, like this, which justifies the whole e3 concept as well. Just, just that f file is a sort of counterplay here, so white would be driven back here say queen a2 and black could play something like c5 and should be okay so anyway bishop d6 that's actually taken queen takes 
a5 rook h e8 rook b c1 rook d7 a takes a takes h3 another another little clever move rook e5 so this gives the possibility of rook a5 under numerous conditions now which is a useful defensive resource uh, if going in with queen d2 queen a4 would appear to be equal even if white loses the e3 pawn uh, it's quite dangerous because of rook a1 coming later so anyway so rook e5 rook a1 and now an another clever move here to defend things can you guess okay rook a5 even though the b pawn's pinned uh, if white dared take there then there's uh, queen d1 check getting the queens off and getting an outside pass pawn uh, so no problem there so we see rook c a4 and here now we see queen d3 so the queens are, are coming off now queen takes is, is chosen anyway rook takes so this rook and pawn ending is still a pawn up for black so Lila a pawn up in this rook and pawn ending how easy is the conversion well ha here rook d8 c pawn comes over the king is in the right place to try and herd the pawns so a3 check king c3 and the king's herding the pawns here uh, so after after this move uh, if rook takes a3 there's rook d3 check I believe so to pick up uh, a tempo there that would be fatal for white uh, if we follow this it's just queenie one so there's a cl clever little nuance there uh, so let's see so c4 nice move e6 king b2 rook b7 king c3 rook a7 rook d6 another clever little move provoking the pawn forward for this check driving the king further away and now a2 that's taken takes and now the king's pretty far away from this c pawn this c pawn's actually winning here it seems uh, if we look at this it looks absolutely winning now why black can actually just build a bridge so to speak to get the pawn queening so the game ended here adjudication uh, just to show this bridge building move rook e4 so rook d4 would build a bridge so to speak king d3 rook d4 and once that bridge is there then c2 and the king's going to assist queening the pawn so yeah this is I thought this was an interesting game because it's showing another little hat of Lee the chest that she can play against you know a very ferocious gambit potentially the Danish gambit was accepted uh, I like the neatness of castling queenside and how the counter sacrifice of pawns stabilized the position to get a slightly better end game so that's a sort of camp black Capablanca style to it to sort of reduce all the complexity down go for the end game just win that so I thought that was quite neat and elegant I hope you did too comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much